Okay, you can stop the drop ships. Please, please stop the drop ships. Stop! You've seen them. You've fought them. You hate them. They're automatons. The mechanical red menace on one of our war fronts in Helldivers 2. But where did all these robots come from? The interesting thing is not even Super Earth Intelligence seems to know. Using information from Helldivers 1 and context clues we see in this game, we can connect a lot of dots that tell us about what the automatons are, what planet they've come from, and how we'll smash their mechanical manacles of repression. Hug your bros, prep your 500 kilogram bombs, and deploy hell pods because we're diving into the lore and the future of Helldiver 2's automatons. Obey my cat! Hit the subscribe button. To discover the truth of our current enemy, we must first explore their past. And the first Helldiver game didn't actually have automatons, instead it featured a different faction called cyborgs. These original cyborgs were regular humans of Super Earth that didn't fully buy into the concept of managed democracy, and instead seceded from the Galactic Union and set up their own shop on a snowy wasteland planet they called Cyberstan. Of course, these people weren't just satisfied with starting their own augmented perfect union, they also chose to augment their bodies. The cyborgs were, as you can probably guess, mechanically enhanced humans. Their roster of mobile Helldiver target practice is actually pretty familiar familiar at a cursory glance. Guns for arms, swords for arms, but there's one extra crucial detail that the cyborgs have and the automatons don't. If you look closely, you can tell that a lot, if not most, of the bodies of cyborg units are still fleshy and have most of their overall human appearance. Remember this, it's going to be important for later. Of course, a difference in opinions on what the ratio of flesh to motherboard the human body should contain isn't exactly grounds for never-ending warfare, and if the cyborg troglodytes had stopped there, it would have been the end of it. But they committed some pretty significant crimes, the first being terrorism, setting off a bomb in District 48 on Super Earth itself, killing thousands of loyal voters. And even worse, they committed the crime of being communists. Yeah, that red star symbol of theirs is a nod to the real world red star, adopted by the former Soviet Union that became a symbol of communism worldwide. You might think the cyborgs of Helldivers 1 and the automatons we fight in Helldivers 2 are completely separate entities. The automatons are just the updated new version for the sequel, and it's as simple as that. But it's pretty clear that's not actually the case. For one, that symbol, the section Red Star, is used by the automaton invaders. Instead of being a red star on its own, red is heavily featured as the primary color of automaton designs, and the star itself is black inside a cogwheel. Now this is admittedly my speculation and reading into the symbology, but by using the same star as the former cyborgs, the automaton invaders are established to be connected to Cyberstan, and the cogwheel probably reflects their less fleshy and more mechanical nature. I suppose I should say mostly mechanical, because going back to the thing I said was going to be important about the cyborgs, it's actually dubious if the automatons are completely mechanical. There's several things about these new robots that indicate they may still use human parts in some form of their construction, and possibly may even still have some glimmer of humanity still left within them. The first is their designs. Automatons are obviously metal except for one key portion of their bodies, and that's the head. On many different automaton units, they feature a white material on the front portion of their skull, which looks an awful lot like bone. The berserkers decorate themselves with skulls, but I'm not counting that one. Another interesting choice is that the humanoid robots themselves all feature a red tubing for their hydraulic system, while the vehicles and less human looking units, like the hulks, feature black tubing. Red has a look more like veins and arteries running through them, which got me thinking, is there a specific reason for that? In a lot of the areas of interest in fabrication zones, you're able to find no shortage of dead civilians or SEAF soldiers, but every now and then, you'll stumble across something that looks like this. And this is definitely different. Piles of dead bodies and even some of them being boxed up is weird. Are they being collected for use or shipping somewhere? Given that automatons seem to give no second thought to just leaving dead humans laying around wherever they've fallen, it certainly is a strange detail to have a literal human graveyard in some of the fabrication areas where it seems that the bodies are being stored to some end. Oh, they're being used all right. I posit to you that the automatons aren't completely mechanical, but instead the main processor within them is the 
the most powerful computer that we have access to, the human brain. If we take the Ministry of Truth at face value, they'd have us believe that the robots are completely mechanical and soulless. They don't bond together, they have no camaraderie, and they especially don't feel pain. Huh, that's interesting behavior for a programmed robot. It's almost human. Patrolling an area for signs of enemy activity is one thing, but why chant together like human platoons while doing it? Marching chants do more than just keep a troop marching in time together. It's also a psychological technique that promotes bonding within the unit and encourages working together as a whole. If automatons have no need for this because they're purely mechanical, programmed machines, why are they doing something that provides them absolutely no benefit? It's actually kind of a stupid thing for them to be doing because it gives away their position position before you even see them. Okay, now why are the robots screaming in pain when you gun them down with an SMG? They're not capable of feeling pain, right? Right? Seems like a strange behavior to program into a robot. We actually know that they may even have fear of their own mortality because one of the loading tool tips tells us that the more they get shot at, the less accurate they become. There's another way to describe this that's a lot more succinct. Oh gee, what's the word? Uh, panic. They are panicking. And in my mind, the most likely reason why is because they still have human behavior left over, even though an attempt was made to wipe their minds clean during their construction. But who would do such a thing? And why? Well, the answers to these questions kind of gets murky. According to the Ministry of Truth, the automatons are robots created as an automated workforce by Super Earth. They rose up in rebellion, determined to destroy the human way of life and take the prosperity they'd been creating for themselves. If you go talk to your democracy officer on board your ship, sometimes he'll tell you about the last galactic war and what happened to the different factions. According to him, the cyborgs were defeated and fully contained in the minds of Cyberstan. Now, this part is where I have to get a little, uh, trust me bro, these voice lines exist because I didn't film them while the automaton invasion was active and I didn't realize I wouldn't be able to get them later. But between the shipmaster and the democracy officer, when the automaton invasion was ongoing, it seems the cyborgs going to the mines isn't exactly the full story. During this particular set of missions, they also would explain that Cyberstain had been under super earth control and in re-education for the last 100 years. This echoes the cycle that would repeat itself during the first galactic war from Helldivers 1, where after a defeat, super earth would send in command to reintegrate the people back into managed democracy and take over all government positions for a period of five years before Cyberstan would be declared cured of communism. Then a super earth megacorp government contractor would move in, take over all factories and resources, piss the cyborgs off, and the whole cycle would repeat itself. Eventually, it seems that someone on super earth learned their lesson because instead of declaring Cyberstan cured at any point, they eventually just set up a permanent presence and subjected the cyborgs to permanent re education. Now, because we know that the automatons co-opted the symbol of Cyberstan, we can assume that the two factions are somehow connected. And because the robots seem to exhibit some remnants of human behavior, it's entirely plausible that the cyborgs were perhaps dismantled and turned into fully automated beings since they were so resistant to reintegration to the ideals of managed democracy in the previous century. But the big question remains, how did the robots come to have such massive numbers. Well, if Super Earth isn't behind or aware of how they became this large of a faction, it stands to reason that something must have happened on Cyberstan. Cyberstan is what's commonly referred to in general sci-fi as a forge planet. It has massive mining, refining, and fabrication facilities that make it so valuable to Super Earth. This makes it the prime candidate for the location of where the automatons have been getting mass produced, and if our officers are concerned about finding out where they've been rampantly churned out to the point that they are an overwhelming swarm that can endlessly airdrop in units, the re-education effort on Cyberstan must not have been going so swimmingly. 
In fact, we can be pretty confident that the automaton front of the war will eventually lead to Cyberstan, because if you check out the Valdis sector of the Galactic War Map, you'll see a certain familiar planet right here. And if I'm right, and human brains are used in the construction of new automatons, it'd make a lot of tactical sense for Cyberstan to build up as many forces as they can, then send in invasion units out to different planets with more humans to harvest them and begin smaller manufacturing operations to build their army and simultaneously get closer to Super Earth. But what do you think? Why does it seem the automatons have some vestiges of humanity left? Do you think they're repurposed cyborgs? Let's discuss in our Discord community or chat about lore during the next live stream where you can come play with me. It's good fun.